Shalom. Oh, praise, honor, glory to our power, Yahweh, our heavenly father, the power of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and his only begotten son, the redeemer of Israel, the conquering lion from the tribe of Judah, the root and offspring of King David, the bright and morning star. That's right, the bright and morning star, the prince of peace, Shiloh. His name is Yahweh Shai, coming in his glory. Family, another day to lift up the name of our power, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, because he says in Isaiah 62, eh, verse 5, 5, verse 6 and 7, he says what? They that make mention of the Lord shall not what? Shall not give him rest. Just roughly paraphrasing. Until what? Until he make Jerusalem a praise on the earth once again. So family, we're going to get into it. Apostle Paul asks an interesting question in the book of Romans chapter 3. It says, let's read it. The book of Romans chapter 3. Verse 3, it says, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without an effect? That's an important question he has. Because family, this good news here, not everybody is going to accept it. But does that mean that whatever the Lord said was going to happen, it's never going to happen because somebody didn't believe? This is what fell into my spirit this morning, in the middle of the night. The word was, what if some don't believe? So for me, that's where the inspiration came from. Because the book says, well, a man's going is of the Lord. How would a man then know his way? Family, we are all robots here. Everybody is in their lot. But the question again is, what? The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 3, it says, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without an effect? Verse 4, it says here, God forbid, the Most High forbid. It says, Yea, let the Most High be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and might us overcome when thou art judged. No matter what my opinion is, no matter what your opinion is, the Lord counsel shall stand. After everything that is happening around us, if you can see what is happening, the Lord has blinded you. And that is pretty sad. Family, we are never going to stop this is for the elect. Eh? Apostle Paul quoted, quoted Isaiah, Isaiah 53. Let's hear what Apostle Paul said first. He says in the, uh, I think it was Romans, Romans 10. He quoted, he quoted uh, the prophet, sorry, Isaiah. He says, uh, please bear with me. I think it was Romans 10, 16. This is Apostle Paul quoting Isaiah because family, that's what the book said. There's nothing new under the sun. Back in Isaiah's days, back in the Babylonians, their family, they were preaching the same thing. Eh? They were telling our people what the Lord is about to do to Jerusalem. Back in those days, family, but guess what? Some didn't believe, but what? But whatever the Lord said was going to happen, what happened? So they were taken into captivity. So Apostle Paul is quoting Isaiah. Let's go. He says here, Romans chapter 10, it says verse, uh, is it verse 6? Please bear with me, bear, bear, bear with me. This thing is playing a game on me. It's too early for this stuff here. But we'll bring it out, we'll bring it out. The devil will never win. It says uh, 10, uh, 10, 16, Romans 10, 16. It says here, this is uh, Apostle Paul quoting Isaiah, in Isaiah 53, it says here, But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who have believed our report? Let's get the actual, let's, let's get uh, what Isaiah said. 
Let's go to Isaiah 53. So family, no matter whether you believe or not, the Lord is going to do his will. Eh? The time is here. This is not a time to be playing with your life. It's not a time to be playing with your life. But here, Isaiah 53. It says, who? Isaiah 53, starting from verse 1. It says, who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He have no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. So Isaiah prophesied about our king, Yahweh Shai. It says, when we see Yahweh Shai family, when we see the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Hmm? Eh? It says, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He's going to be perfect. The only begotten son of our power, Yahweh. So family, the question is, what if some don't believe that Yahweh Shai came, went on the cross and died for us and is coming back again? What the Lord said, he's coming back again. It's going to, it's going to happen. Right? It doesn't matter what I think, whether I, I choose to listen or not, family, whatever the Lord says, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It says here, Verse 3 says, He is despised and rejected of, a, of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of our power, and afflicted. This is what Yahweh Shai did for us. Family, he took upon our sins. Eh? Isaiah, in the Old Testament, prophesied about our king. And still, our people are not taking heed. Our people are not taking heed. He said, what if some don't believe? It doesn't matter whether you choose to believe or not. The Lord cancer is going to stand. The Lord is about to destroy some of our people. It's about to destroy this kingdom. That's right. And it's about to establish his only begotten son. And those that were picked from the foundation of the earth, the elect will be saved. This is for the elect. This is for the elect. It says here, verse 5, it says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. Eh? He was bruised for our iniquities and people still don't believe. It says, the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. With his stripes we are healed. Our king was tortured. Our king was beaten up. Family, they said he was murdered more than any man. Eh? He was bruised. Eh? Can you imagine they blindfolded you and somebody slapped you and then asked you, oh, prophesy who slapped you? He was mocked. The king of Israel was mocked. Some of his own people rejected him. The family, no, we praise the Lord. We pray Yahweh for having mercy upon us and giving us the eyes out to see what he's about to do on this planet here. That's right. So it doesn't matter whether people choose to believe or not, the Lord Council is going to stand. Yes, the Lord Council is going to stand. We give honor and glory to our power family. Let's continue. Let's bring out the precept to glorify our power. We're going to go to the book of... Uh, let's see here. I think we're going to hit... Hebrew, Hebrew chapter 4, verse 2 here. Let's read a bit of that. Hebrew 4, verse 2. It says here, For unto us the gospel preached, that's the good news, eh? as well as unto them 
the two thirds of our people. But the word preached did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith in them that had it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. This word has been preached to all of us. Eh? But it benefited us. It stirred up something in our spirit. We believe. But the rest, the ones that are about to be destroyed, it didn't benefit them. Eh? It didn't benefit them. So family, it didn't benefit them. They don't believe. But does that, that, does that mean that, that whatever the Lord is saying is not going to happen? No, family. The Lord Council will always stand. The Lord Council will all, always stand. Let's continue, family. Let's continue. Let's go to the, the, the book of Numbers. So, family, if the Lord says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Oh, yes. He's going to do it. The Lord is not a person that lies. Let's go to the book of uh, the book of uh, Numbers 23, verse 19. It says what? Numbers 23, 19. Twenty. Let's go. It says here. Our power is not a man. It's our power is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken and shall not make it good? Family, you are about to witness A devastation on this planet. Like no other. You are about to witness a chaos. On this planet like no other. You are about to witness a neighbor turning on neighbors. Eh? Countries against country, Nations against nations. Family. This is what the Lord is about to do to this planet to prepare this place for his only begotten son to rule in righteousness. We are living in the last days. The, the, the gospel, the good news have been preached across the four corners of the world. Prophecies are jumping off the pages. All you have to do is look at what is happening in Europe, eh? across Asia, across Africa, across the continent family the question is what if some don't believe family they're gonna die in their own belief let's go to the book let's go to the book of Ezra chapter 15 second Ezra second Ezra chapter 15 It says here, starting from verse 1, it says, Behold, speak thou in the years of my people the words of prophecy, eh? which I will put in thy mouth, says the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord is telling us, the prophet. It says here, Fear not the imaginations against thee. Hmm? Whatever these people are thinking of us, the Lord is saying that don't, don't, don't fear them. Because the Lord that gave them the power, whatever they are doing to us, no matter what is happening around their father, family, it is the Lord that is doing it. 
The Lord is saying here, fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee. The unbelievers, the unbelievers. You see, the incredulity, the unbelievers. That's why it says, what? What if some don't believe? That is okay. But here, listen to this. Verse, verse 3 again. It says, fear not the imaginations against thee. It said, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee. That speak against thee. Eh? Verse 4. Here's the point. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Hmm? It says, behold, says the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. Yes, that's what you're seeing around the world, with the world right now. Eh? Shortage of food, famine, energy, famine. What are you about to witness? I can't even describe it. Even, even the book of Daniel chapter 1, just sorry, chapter 12 verse 1. It says at that time when Michael stand up for the children of Israel. Because it's going to be so bad that the Lord had to intervene. And deliver his elect. So here, let's repeat verse 4 here. So you know what is coming. It says, 2 Ezra chapter 15. For verse 4, it says, For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. It says, Behold, says the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. The sword, which is what? The, uh, uh, the sword, modern day sword is what? The guns. Eh? Any form of weapon. It says, The sword. Famine, death, and destruction. This is what the Lord is bringing. It says, why is the Lord bringing this? Verse 6, it says what? For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their, their hurtful works are fulfilled. Yes. This place is ripe. Hmm? It is ripe. It's ripe, full of wickedness. Right? So that's why the Lord is bringing the fire to cleanse it. A fire is a cleansing agent. When it's all done, Yahweh Shai is going to give us the blueprint to what? To rebuild this kingdom again. Eh? Back like the Garden of Eden. It's going to be refreshed. That is what is coming. That's what we should be praying for. We pray for destruction of this place so Yahweh Shai's kingdom can be exalted. Yes. That's what we want. The book don't lie. Verse 4 again, 2nd Ezra chapter 15, verse 4. It says, For the unfaithful hmm, shall die in their unfaithfulness. It says, Behold, says the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. The sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful words are fulfilled. Hmm? That's what the Lord is saying. They are they unfaithful shall die eh? in their unfaithfulness that's what is happening hmm? that's what's going to happen so it doesn't matter whether somebody believe or not whatever the lord says that's what's going to stand all praises to our power yahweh but hashem yahweh shine family let's continue it says here let's go to second Ezra, chapter 9 verse 10 9 10. It says here, Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 10 says, For such as in their life have received benefit and have not known me. Hmm? Because family, people making, you know, some some you know, some of our people, they've got their benefit in this world. They got their the best jobs, eh? They are rich. Three, four, five mansions. They cast the word behind them. They don't care about the Lord. Because in their heart, they think this kingdom is going to go on forever. No, no, no. But this is what the Lord is saying about those people. It says here. For such as in their life have received benefit and have not known me. Hmm? Because when everything is good, everything going good, guess what? The Lord is the last person on your head. Right? You don't think about the Lord. It says here. Verse 11. And they that have loathed my law. Hmm? While they had yet liberty, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't important uh, to you. Why yet they have liberty? 
And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood it not, but despised it. A place of repentance. The Hawashai came, died for us, eh? brought us back. If everybody, people take it lightly. People take it lightly. Because at the end of the day, you know, the church, especially the church, the church, eat what you can, eat whatever you want to eat as long as you're, you know, you're calling the name of Jesus. That name doesn't exist, family. Our king, his name is Yahweh Shai. Yes. That's why the doctrine that they taught us in the church family, it destroyed us. That's why some of us, the Lord pulled us out of the church eh? and gave us the eyes up and blessed us with a new song that we are singing in the last days. Eh? They, they, they told us in the church that the people living on the land are the chosen seed. Eh? Not knowing that family, we didn't read the book. We, we depended on these pastors, our so-called pastors, to teach us the book. The family majority of them don't even know what they are talking about. They don't know nothing. That because the Lord is not dealing with the church. These, these pastors are all about lining their pockets and deceiving the sheep. Those are the Lord, the apple of the Lord's eyes. That big family. The Lord is about to do something on this planet that's going to shock the entire world. Those churches, that's why it says that on that day there shall be gnashing of teeth. Yes. But family, I don't want to go up too much. Let's go. Second Ezra 9. Verse 12. It says here. It says here. The same. The same. The same. The same. Let's go back to verse 11. Let's read the entire 11 and 12. It says, And they that have loved my law, while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood it not, but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. Eh? Verse 13. It says, And therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished. And when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved. Whose the world is and for whom the world is created. You hear that? The world was created for the righteous. So what if some don't believe? They're going to learn the hard way. Eh? They're going to be burned with nuclear thermal missiles. Family, yes. The missile that's going to be going across uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles. That this nation's about to what? Send to each other. Eh? And then when the Lord comes, the lasers that are going to come out of the chariot eh, to destroy the two thirds of our people, yes, they're going to learn the hard way. Oh, yes, family. The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. It doesn't matter if somebody does, doesn't believe. No. Again, let's go back to that, that chapter again. Let's go to the book of Romans 3.3. 3. And we're going to finish up, family. It's supposed to be a quick lesson. Romans chapter 3, verse 3, it says here, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without an effect? So you say you don't believe, so whatever the Lord says is not going to come? The following verse says what? The Most High forbid, yea, let the Most High be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and might as overcome when thou art judged. So family, whether you believe this word or not, the Lord is about to destroy this planet. Yes. He's about to destroy this kingdom. All their rulership, their kings, because the Lord is, the Lord is bringing his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, to rejuvenate the earth. This kingdom of heaven is going to be on this planet. It's not going to be somewhere flying. It's, it's not going to be up in the air. And it's not going to be, no, the heaven. Yahweh, that's where he dwells. The third dimension. And we, this is our place. That's where we're going to be, family. But it's going to be refreshed. Because why? 
the his only begotten son, the redeemer of Israel, Yahweh Shai, is going to be among us. Family, this is not my word. It is in the Bible. Read it. Yahweh Shai is going to be among his people. The new Jerusalem. After the fire, the elect of Israel, what would happen? They will come down. They will, be, they will come down in the chariot, the ship, the new Jerusalem. It is the Lord, our Lord Yahweh Shai, who is going to take us back home. Eh? He's the one. It's written in the book. The new Jerusalem. Family, read the book of Revelation. It's all over the, 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 uh, the book. The Bible is our history book. The Hebrew Israelite, the so-called Latino, the so-called black, the so-called African Americans. Yes, spread across the four corners of the world. Yes, that's our history book. Get familiar with it. It doesn't matter whether somebody believe it or not. Whatever the Lord said is going to happen, is going to happen. That's why it says what? The unbelievers, they will die in the, the, the unfaithful shall die in the unfaithfulness. Roughly paraphrasing. Family, let me see if I can. Uh, what else do I have here? Let's finish off with uh, Romans 11 7. Romans 11 verse 7. It says here. It says here. Romans 11 verse 7. This also shows you that what? The Lord is only dealing with the elect of Israel. It's only dealing with the elect of Israel. It says, Romans 11 verse 7, it says here. This thing keeps flipping on me. Romans 11 verse 7, it says here. Listen carefully, family. It says, what then? That's with a question mark. Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for. But the election, meaning the elect, it says, but the election have obtained it and the rest were blinded. Let me repeat that again. Romans 11 verse 7. What then? Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for. Israel, the 12th tribe of Jacob. It says here, verse 7, Romans 11 verse 7. What then? Question mark. Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, the Most High have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David said, King David says, let their table be made a snare. The table is the Bible. Be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Can you imagine being blinded and not, not knowing the truth? And this is what's going to happen to the two tests of our people. It says the election has obtained it. The election is referring to the elect of Israel. And the rest were blinded. So if they don't get it, guess who blinded them? The Lord blinded them. The Lord don't want them. If they're still getting up every Sunday, going to church and believing in that nonsense, guess what? The Lord blinded them. The Lord don't want them. There are some people in the church that will see from the foundation of the earth. It's about the election. Eventually, the Lord is going to open their eyes and they're going to see it. They're going to see, what am I doing here? And that's the spirit of the Lord. Because we were once in, in that boat. We were there. Family, yes. We grew up in the church. We grew up in the church. Yes, family. So he says, the election has obtained it and the rest were blinded. So again, the question to you today was what? What if some don't believe? Let's finish with that. Romans 3 verse 3. It says, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? The Most High forbid. Yea, let the Most High be true. But every man a liar, as it is written that thou mightest be justified in thy saying and mightest overcome when thou art judged. 
The reason why they don't believe is why? The Lord blinded them. The Lord blinded them. The Lord don't want them. This is how powerful the Lord is. It says the deceiver and the deceived are both his. That's the power that we say. So the fact that he has given us the eyes of to see what is happening around us, eh? to prepare our heart for what is coming, Honor, glory to our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai. That's how blessed we are. That's how blessed we are. Eh? That's how blessed we are. That's how blessed we are. It says wisdom and knowledge is going to be the stability of the time. And what? And the strength of our salvation. Just roughly power phrasing. Because knowing this word here, when everything is happening around you, you said, oh, okay. The Lord is moving on our behalf. You see in the prophets jump, the, you see the prophecies jumping off the page. He says, okay, the Lord is working with us. He says he was going to do ABC. He says we're going to bring famine. He's going to bring a lot of death. And then you see in all these things around. He says, yeah, the Lord is working on our, on our behalf. Preparing the way for his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, to come and what? And rule in righteousness. So yeah, so family, it doesn't matter what, if some people believe or not. The word is going to go forth regardless. But they're going to die. They're going to be born back into the kingdom. Because at the end of the day, it says what? All Israel shall be saved. Is it 11.7? Romans 11.7? I think it says... I think it's uh at the end of the day family we know that the book says what all Israel shall be saved as it's written right so yes they're gonna be destroyed with fire on this end but they will be born back into the the kingdom I want to I want to get it quickly Or Romans 11 26 Romans 11 26 let's read it I know I know I've quoted it many times so let's read it it says here uh, Romans 11 26 and so and so all Israel okay all Israel shall be saved and as it's written there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, which is Yahweh Shai, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. That's right. So family, yes, at the end of the day, Yahweh Shai came and died for Israel. Okay, the 12th tribe of Jacob. That's it. He didn't come and die for the dawn. It wasn't about the world. Okay, don't believe that nonsense. This is Yahweh Shai came to die for his people, those that were under the law. He came to redeem those that were under the law. The laws were given to the Israelites when they left Egypt. All right, so family, like the question again, what if some don't believe? It doesn't matter whether they believe it or not. It is the Lord that made them blind. If they don't believe it, the Lord blinded them. He says, but the election has obtained it. And yes, family, that's how blessed we are. If you're receiving this word, you are blessed. You are indeed sealed for salvation, which is coming for the Israelites. We're going to end it there. Family, I hope you will edify our praises, honor, glory to our power, Yahweh, and his only begotten son, the Redeemer of Israel, Yahweh Shai. Shalom, beloved.